Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Exploring Careers webinar for music therapy. My name is Carmelina Palacios, and on behalf of the Music Therapy Academy, we're going to explore the field of music therapy today. We're going to learn about the different fields within music therapy, learn about what is music therapy, and also how to become a music therapist in Canada. And as a bonus, we're also going to get a glimpse of a day in the life of a real music therapist with none other than the founder of the Music Therapy Academy, Rachel Finnerty. So just before we get started, I wanted to do a quick little self-introduction. As I said earlier, my name is Carmelina Palacios. I graduated from McMaster University in 2021 with a Bachelor of Arts degree in French and Music and a minor in Psychology. And when I first applied to university, I was dead set on pursuing a career in education. I never really considered other careers that I could do with my passions in French and music, and I only ever thought about teaching. So during the second year of university, I had one of the biggest shocks of my life. I took an introduction to music therapy course and an introduction to music therapy research course, and I loved both of them. I love both of them so much that I couldn't stop thinking about them months after the courses ended. That's how you know the course is good. <laughs> and I basically fell in love with music therapy. And so after thinking about music therapy for months and months after the courses ended, I had to make a serious decision for myself. I needed to decide, did I want to pursue music therapy as a career? Did I want to do music therapy instead of teaching? And no, I did not want to do music therapy instead of teaching, but I still wanted to do something. I still wanted something to do with music therapy in my life. So I decided, why not do both? I can pursue teaching and I can also pursue music therapy because why would I have just one career when I can have two? So that's what I decided. I decided I would pursue both and I'm taking small steps to learn more about music therapy as I pursue my career in education and pursue music therapy later in the future. All right, that's enough about me. Let's get started and learn about what you guys actually came here for, which is to learn more about the career of music therapy. So for starters, I have a question for all of you. Oh, there we go, let's get started. Are you interested in working with babies, children, or adults? And if you answered yes to any of these questions, then music therapy might just be for you too. Music therapists work with people of all ages. They work in group or individual settings, and they work with a variety of different people, including those with dementia, those on the autism spectrum, those with mental health, palliative care, or rehabilitation needs. In fact, there was a, an Alzheimer's studies done by the Music Therapy Association of British Columbia, and they found that about 65% of music therapists work specifically with the cognitively impaired elderly in Canada. I think that's pretty crazy, but what can this look like? What does music therapy look like in action? This is what music therapy looks like in action. As you can see here, music therapists work with all kinds of people from children to older adults, so on the top left here, we can see, oops, let me turn on that laser pointer. <laughs> on the top left corner here, we can see a music therapist working with a child in a hospital. Over here in the top right corner, we can see a music therapist or two music therapists working with a group of children. On the bottom left corner here, we have a music therapist working with a group of older adults. And over here on the bottom right, we have a music therapist working with just one adult, one-on-one -on -one with the help of another worker. So as we can see, music therapists, they work with everybody. But what exactly is music therapy? Let's dig a little deeper into that one. The Canadian Association of Music Therapists, which has regulated music therapy in Canada since 1974, they define music therapy as a discipline in which certified music therapists, or MTAs, use music purposefully within therapeutic relationships to support development, health, and well being. In short, this means that music therapists help others achieve a healthcare goal. But what are healthcare goals? Healthcare goals can be things like helping someone recover their speech after a stroke, 
It can be helping someone relearn how to walk, helping someone with confidence or anxiety, helping others cope with pain. And these are just a few of the things that could be considered healthcare goals. And I encourage you to try to come up with some as well. So let's go back to the pictures we saw earlier and let's try to identify the healthcare goals that the music therapists are trying to achieve. So in the top left photo here, we have a music therapist and they're helping out a stressed out child in pain, but you actually can't tell that they're in pain because clearly they're smiling in this picture and the girl looks very happy. So this music therapist, they work with other members of the hospital to provide treatment for this child and about 20 others that he works with every day that he works. On the top right and bottom left photos, you can see group music therapy in action. And group therapy or group music therapy is a great way to help with social needs because you're in a group with other people. And on the bottom right over here, we can see an older adult relearning how to walk after recovering from a stroke. So music therapists in this case are helping him with um, movement goals. All right, so now that we know a little bit more about what a music therapist does when they work, how do I become a music therapist? What do you do? So let me show you. This is a screenshot from the Canadian Association of Music Therapists website, which is musictherapy.ca. Nice and simple to remember. And this website, on this website, you can see the recognized music therapy education programs in all of Canada. So currently there are six in total, which means that these programs are very, very competitive. Now, some of these programs are undergraduate programs. Some of these are graduate programs. So it's important to do your own research on each one and see which one might be best for you. So let's start with the undergraduate music therapy programs. If you want to become a music therapy through undergraduate studies, you will need to get a bachelor's degree at any of these four universities in Canada. And we have right over here, Acadia University in Nova Scotia, Canadian Mennonite University in Manitoba, Capilano University in British Columbia, and Wilfrid Laurier University in Ontario. But let's say you already have a bachelor's degree so as long as you take certain psychology and music courses, you can still pursue music therapy, but through graduate studies. So you would be a graduate student and you can obtain a graduate certificate, diploma or degree in music therapy, depending on the program. So currently you can pursue graduate studies in music therapy at the following schools, University of Toronto in Ontario, Concordia University in Quebec, and Wilfrid Laurier University in Ontario. Now, it doesn't matter if you pursue music therapy through undergraduate or graduate studies, both ways will allow you to become a music therapist accredited or a certified music therapist in Canada. So no matter which way you do it, you will get the same type of certification. So I have this chart here, I hope it makes sense, but if it doesn't quite make sense, I also have another one. And you can think of music therapy or the path to music therapy as a road. So um, for example, undergraduate studies in music therapy can be one road and graduate studies in music therapy can be another road. And eventually they become the same road or path. So eventually the roads will connect and become one. So again, no matter which path you take to become a music therapist, um, both paths will lead you to become a music therapist accredited. And again, no matter which path you take, um, you'll have to complete certain requirements. And so uh, the two of the main requirements are a 1000 hour internship, which is a lot of hours and a board certified exam. So you have to pass that board certified exam in order to become a certified music therapist or music therapist accredited. Now, if one day you decide to apply to a music therapy program, in general, these are some of the things that you will need to do. First, you will need to pass a um, successful audition on your main instrument. You will also need the academics, so usually about a B minus average, but this can vary by school and by school year. So be sure to check out the exact requirements on any of the university websites if you're interested in this. And also you will need to 
um, get the psychology and music course requirements if you're pursuing music therapy through graduate studies. So again, these are general requirements. Remember to do some research and see which programs might be best for you. Some might emphasize psychology a little more than the music, or some might um, emphasize the music a bit more than the psychology aspect of music therapy. But all of these um, will allow you to become a certified music therapist in Canada. So feel free to reach out to each and every one of the universities if you have any questions regarding their requirements. All right, so now that you know a little bit more about what a music therapist does, what do you need to prepare for an audition? For many people, this might be your first audition. So let me, let me um, explain a bit of how they work. So first of all, you already need to know how to play your instrument that you will be auditioning on. So if it's your main instrument, be sure that you already know how to play it to a certain level. Now, most schools will ask for about RCM level six minimum. Again, this can vary by university, so be sure to check out their websites for the most up-to-date requirements for their auditions. And you also, if you're able to, um, play piano and guitar. Now, they are preferred instruments simply because they're very versatile, and you can use them in so many different ways in music therapy, but they're not required. So they're preferred instruments, but not required. And also on all the instruments that you know how to play, um, you need to be able to improvise on them. And again, similar to what I said about the piano and guitar, if you can improvise on your instrument, that will make you such a versatile music therapist and you will be better able to help those that you are helping. So the better you can improvise, the better you might be able to help somebody in the future. So. Be sure to practice those improvisation skills if you're considering music therapy in the future. And finally, you also need to pass a successful audition as part of your audition process. So similar to a job interview, you're just gonna talk with someone and let them know why you wanna do music therapy and also probably talk about your history with your instruments and other things as well. All right, so now that you know about um, how the audition process works. Let's talk a little bit about other possible careers in the field of music therapy. Now we've seen these pictures before and we know that music therapists work everywhere. We know that they work in hospitals. We know that they work with people of all ages, but uh, direct music therapy isn't the only thing you can do with a degree in music therapy or a graduate diploma in music therapy. So I have a list here, and these are some local examples to me of um, music therapy and related careers. Um, so again, these are local to me. You might have other opportunities closer and local to you. So be sure to look into that if that's something that you're interested in. So firstly, let's talk about private practice and self-employed. So practicing music therapists work directly with people, just like we've seen in these pictures. and this is one career that you can do with music therapy, but you could also become an educator. Now, music therapists, they can be university professors at a school that offer music therapy courses for those that aren't necessarily in a um, music therapy program. So it could be introduction courses. They can be educators for already practicing music therapists as well. So music therapists accredited, they need to complete a certain amount of professional development hours every few years. So music therapists that has a skill that they can share with others in the field, um, this is a great way for those to share those skills with others so that they can use it in their career. So you can become a university professor or you can um, provide professional development for other practicing music therapists. And so you can access some of those professional development uh, videos through the Music Therapy Academy's website. So if you know anybody that's a music therapist, Music Therapy Academy has some professional development available on the website. And you can also become a researcher in music therapy and related fields. So on the screen here, I have the Canadian Journal of Music Therapy and oh, the subtitles are blocking it. Um, and the Voices World Forum. 
for music therapy. These are examples of current research in music therapy. So you can go on their website and check out some of the latest research that's happening right now. But I've also listed related fields such as um, the Music and Health Collaboratory from the University of Toronto, the McMaster Live Lab and the Pop Lab from McGill University and also a few other places um, in case you wanted to check them out. But also because music therapists, they work with a lot of people and um, music therapy and other fields in music and healthcare, they all work together. So something that might be useful in one field of music and healthcare might later become helpful in music therapy or something learned in music therapy might be helpful to another professional in the field of music and healthcare. So everybody works together. And so that's why I've listed both right on the screen. All right, and I've also listed some music therapy associations um, in Canada and also from around the world. So if you ever have questions about music therapy specifically in your area, or if you're looking for a certified music therapist, or you just want more resources about music therapy and you wanna learn more, these are some places that you can reach out to. So we have Music Therapy Association of Saskatchewan, Music Therapy Association of, Ont of Ontario, the World Federation of Music Therapy, British Association for Music Therapy, L'Association Québécoise de Musicothérapie, Australian Music Therapy Association, and there are others as well, but again, most of these are local to Canada, um, but feel free to reach out to them for any questions that you have. All right, now that we know a little bit more about music therapy, Let's take a look at a day in the life of a music therapist with the founder of the Music Therapy Academy, Rachel Finnerty. So Rachel, take it away. So what does a day in the life of a music therapist look like? One of the great parts of working within the profession of music therapy is that you can curate what your day is going to look like. For example, when I first started working as a music therapist, I began a private practice. My clients initially consisted of children on the autism spectrum, and we worked toward goals related to enhancing speech and communication, as well as providing opportunities for self-expression through music making. The sessions occurred within the family's homes, and my days included lots of travel time, as well as loading and unloading my car with instruments. I then gained employment at a hospital, and I still continued to maintain a private practice. But now, in addition to my private practice, my days included team meetings with doctors and nurses, occupation therapists, physiotherapists, social workers, and dietitians. I met daily with patients who had come through the eMERGE who had been assessed to need more time before next steps could be determined. So my job was to assist the team in understanding the patient's strengths to inform if the patient would be referred to rehabilitation, a long-term care facility, or if they would go home with or without assistance. Singing familiar music with a patient or improvising or facilitating the writing of a song provided another window into the abilities of the patient. For example, a patient may refuse physical rehabilitation, making it difficult to assess muscle strength, stamina, range of motion. But when engaging in a music therapy session, these aspects can be assessed through the playing of instruments and singing. Additionally, a patient may provide limited answers to a social worker due to challenges with speech and cognition, Yet, they may be able to provide in-depth information about their emotional well-being in a song. My time at the hospital also included working in Veterans Affairs, and I spent my days assisting individuals with dementia to engage in positive reminiscence. I also assisted with the management of pain perception through distraction and mood enhancement through the use of music. And I facilitated meaningful moments between loved ones during end of life through the use of songwriting and singing, as well as through music listening. In addition to the clinical work at the hospital, there's, of course, paperwork involved, uh, re 
uh, writing reports is required in order to communicate with the healthcare team as well as with family members. Um, I then moved to a new city and so then my day in the life of a music therapist was no longer at the hospital but focused in private practice. So now my days were spent between long-term care facilities, different day programs, so day programs for adults on the autism spectrum, recovering from stroke, those who had an acquired brain injury, as well as working within my own uh, music therapy studio. And in the studio space, I worked with uh, children and adults with a diversity of diagnoses, focusing on supporting social skills, physical goals, as well as mental health goals. The private practice grew until I was working with a team of six music therapists. For music therapists working in private practice, there can become more clients than one has time. So it's not uncommon for music therapists to hire a team of more music therapists to work within their practice. So the day in the life of a music therapist in private practice also includes management. Management of your team, as well as marketing your practice, advocating for music therapy, and educating about music therapy and its benefits. As a music therapist in private practice, you are both a healthcare practitioner and a business owner. Recognizing the need for further opportunities for professional development through the lens of music therapy for both music therapists and other healthcare professionals, I then founded the Music Therapy Academy. So as you can see, working as a music therapist can include many different journeys. Working as a music therapist can also include conducting research and teaching. For example, I created music therapy courses at McMaster University that I teach, and I'm currently conducting research under the supervision of Dr. Laurel Trainer at McMaster University about the efficacy of music therapy for proactive wellness. So specifically looking at proactively reducing stress and anxiety with undergraduate university students. And in this research, we're collecting psychometric data as well as physiological data, such as cortisol, the biomarker of, of cortisol, uh, and heart rate variability. A day in the life of a music therapist includes being a frontline worker, an educator, a researcher, an advocate, and a business owner. All this to say that there are so many different opportunities within the field of music therapy, and you can orchestrate what each day will look like. Will it predominantly be clinical work or business development, research, education? Will you work uh, with children or with elderly uh, or with all age groups? Will you work with client groups focusing on mental health goals or physical rehabilitation? Or will you have a diverse clientele recognizing and supporting the interplay between physical and mental well being? It's all up to you in the day of the life of a music therapist. Thank you so much everyone for tuning into this webinar about exploring the career of music therapy. I hope that you learn more about music therapy and where you can find more information if you're personally interested in learning more. Please feel free to check out the Music Therapy Academy's website, social media, and blog, which is located on the website, if you're interested in learning more or learning more about music therapy through our webinars. Once again, thank you so much everybody and I wish you all a really great day.